someone invites you to go on a trip with them because your way of handling a particular job on the trip is what's needed. So you pack your stuff and you're excited to go. You keep wondering though, because let's say you're the nanny and the kids chose you, you kind of wonder where that fits into the big picture because it simply can't be that just because the kids said, yes, she's great, she makes a great cup of cocoa, then that automatically makes you qualified. It's a tour, it's a journey with little stops along the way where obviously Raven and Troy has to perform in front of audiences and where the crew and this time the kids are coming along. They're not Raven and Troy's kids, they're orphans. Stella, Mew, Snowflake, Babe, Cookie. Coming along on the journey with seemingly no other purpose than just sticking together. They also don't appear to be very interested in discovering the world. It's as if they've already seen a lot of it. They're more like using it another time or using it again. They seem to have their very own traditions. Your plane seat is next to Raven's. She's very kind and quiet. She's not like the girl you see on stage photos or music videos jumping around. She's more like this calm, organized, wise woman sitting there. And she looks as if she's always been doing this. And you think that because she's Raven and you're not, there'll be distance. You'll get to know each other slowly, one step at a time. But a tour is not like that. You're either on large stages, sharing an enormous space, or you're crammed together in little compartments like elevators, car seats, and all kinds of airplanes. So very quickly, your bolts start to come loose and you just go with the flow. The kids seem to be doing fine. They know that your job as a nanny is also to make sure they get some homework done down the line. But for now, they'll be enjoying the trip. And as Raven says, you have to learn how to enjoy the moment. Because otherwise you won't last on a busy tour. Hotel rooms are as big as football fields and offer the kids anything. You try to enforce rules, but you can only do that to a certain degree. You are constantly running up against production clock. And you quickly figure out that you're the stranger here, but you do your best. Yeah. As the work continues and continues. In the hotel lobby, there's a bar yeah, okay. with anything you can imagine. And you were hoping that you could sit there for a while and enjoy something extravagant. But by the end of the day, all you can think of is getting hold of a hot cup of tea so that you don't catch a cold because you're moving in and out of buildings all the time. A few hours later, the basement opens up and you've got access to all sorts of things, including an improvised hotel after party, in which you say a lot of emotional things to each other and can't remember half of it. Next up, Republic of Calamanjo, Mango Lagoon, beach concerts, many of them. Parties with people who look you straight in the eyes, ask you questions and think you're interesting. Raven and Troy transforming into whatever gets the job done on time. And the kids, meeting up with another orphan, who they know, Lara. Her foster parents are working at a space center, not far from here. Lara knows the big red house back home. Raven and Troy know Lara, and Lara knows the Mango Lagoon pretty well by now. So the kids go out, and they'll do what other kids do around here. But if you happen to pass by, you can hear that all they're talking about is how to build a spaceship, a fast one. What kind of fuel it should run on, what it should be protected by while it's going through the atmosphere. And they're completely obsessed with this. Stella and Mew has been working on the engine back home while Lara has been working with some kind of auto protection at the space center. It's their thing. And in the kindest way possible, they're not involving you in it. They'll ask for help if it's a matter of getting into a club or pretty much anything that involves other people. 
As soon as they're moving outside of an engineering question, they need your help. They want to know what you think, what you would do. And so in the end, it dawns on you that what you're basically there for is to provide an insight into an alternative lifestyle. A lifestyle that most other people seem to have, where creativity and urgency is not necessarily connected. Because you are the nanny. And you're allowing yourself to be more open to choices in life. Raven and Troy can't deliver that. They're locked on their own path now, it's too late. But you see the nanny, who at the moment has no other obligations, might be able to give them that, or at least she'll give it a try. <laughs>